recordings. Um, you know, until this pandemic struck, um, I was a great proponent um, of live harp music because when it's live, not only do you get to appreciate the music, but you feel the vibrations in the room because as soon as you pluck, I pluck a string, the air is moving and the person actually does get that sense. So now we're in a pandemic situation and <clears throat> the question is, uh, now what? <laughs> now what do we do? So I don't have any um, off the top of my head recommendations. Um, we, uh, you know, we're all, all everyone at Bedside Harp is now working toward um, learning enough technology to be able to record ourselves. Uh, we're offering virtual sessions, which means over Zoom like this, but it's one-on-one. -on -one. And um, that's what I now prefer is virtual sessions where we're able to play for one person uh, and be able to actually, you know, create the kind of, I call it a cradle of sound for that person as opposed to a generic um, recording. Celtic harp versus uh, the therapy harp, which is what I play. So, the you know, Celtic music is beautiful music. Um, Celtic harps have a sharper uh, tone to them. Our harps are built, in fact, the harp that I was playing, I helped design uh, years ago with a harp maker. Um, they're made to deliver a round, full, mellow sound, as opposed to a tight, a tighter sound, which you'll get from the Celtic harp. It's not how many strings you have, it's what you do with the strings. So I have played even a 10-string lyre. And we play it differently, of course, we have fewer strings, we play it differently. But you can still make beautiful music out of, you know, a harp with 19 strings or 17 strings or 23 strings. My concert harp has 47 strings. But that's not my working harp. My working harp is the 23 string harp. Because that's the one that seems to really resonate with people. So the answer is yes. <laughs> we, uh, I'm classically trained. I never improvised on my own. Uh, I never played by ear. But those are the things that we do when we learn to play and serve at the bedside because we could never um, memorize as many tunes as we are called upon to play. And so I teach people, if you can hum the tune, I will teach you how to pull it in by ear. And as far as improvising goes, there are some times that are just important for you not to play a familiar tune. So we learn to improvise as well. And guess what? Music is music is music. We learn how music works so that we will play as much as music works in our improvisations as we do in our familiar tunes. So that was a revelation for me because in, you know, classical training is you, if it wasn't on the page, you don't play it. Um, but it's very freeing when you learn to play by ear and when you learn to improvise, we call it noodling to make it more user friendly. And um, it actually improves your classical, if you do play classical music, it frees you because you do have a safety net. You're able to, if something doesn't go right, boom, you go into a noodle. Ooh, what I have up my sleeve is to, um, you know, we talked a little bit about different harps, and I figured that 
um, for for that presentation, I'll play some different harps, and you'll be able to see that um, I can play small harps, and I can play medium harps, and and even harps that have many more strings. So it should be an interesting program. And thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today, everyone. Take care. Be safe in snow and all this weather. Bye, everyone. Bye.